All right, what we're going to do today is install Windows Server 2012 Release 2 to a virtual machi machine using VMware Player. Now, you can use VMware Player or VMware Workstation or VMware Fusion, which is used on a Mac. Either will work. Uh, but in this case, I'm using the free VMware Player, which does not actually require any licensing. So, to get started, I'm going to create a new virtual machine and I'm going to install it using a disk image file and I'll click browse and this does assume that you've already downloaded the appropriate ISO um, if you are a student at a college you usually have access to uh, what was known as DreamSpark um, and now is called Microsoft Imagine which will give you um, ISOs of a lot of the Microsoft software. So I have a Windows Server 2012 Release 2 here and I will click the ISO and click open and I'll click next. <clears throat> and I'm going to change data center to R2 standard and the name of the system will be server but this is actually asking me for what the login will be called and I really don't want any other logins um, so I just put administrator here and I'm gonna use the default password of capital P at SSW0RD and I will click next I'm not going to enter a product key right now because I actually don't need one for what we're going to be doing with this system. Um, I can use a command to rearm the trial period, so I should have at least 120 days of trial. So I'll click yes. And this is fairly important. Now, if this was on a laptop or I was just going to use the virtual machines here, I would just go ahead and install it to the C drive. But in this case, I know I'm going to be using this virtual machine <clears throat> on other systems so what I'm actually going to do is install it on a external drive and I've created a VMware virtual machines folder so I'll double click that folder and I've created a course code folder so I could put it in there for example and I'm going to make a new folder inside this folder and I will call it server 2012 and I'll press enter and I want to do this because I want each virtual machine to be installed in a separate folder so I'll click OK and then I'll click next I'm gonna leave the settings as they are maximum disk size 60 gigabytes and we will split the virtual disk into multiple files in the event that I might want to use a thumb drive to transfer this virtual machine then I'll click next again and I'm gonna leave these settings as they are but if I had to I could go down on the memory if the whole system does not have more than eight gigabytes of memory if it only has four gigabytes we can customize the hardware and we could shrink down this memory a little bit or we can use the up and down buttons here to take the memory down the system isn't going to be doing anything really processor intensive so we really don't need two gigabytes of memory um, so it's not going to be using a lot of RAM for a lot of different programs so I could take this down so once I click finish it's going to go ahead and create the disk and it will reboot the system or boot it up and it's going to begin the auto installation process now depending on the system you're using the auto install can take a anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes or more depending um, this system that I have is fairly decent so it probably will take about 15 minutes
the system will reboot several times. Um, when it first comes up to the desktop, it's actually installing VMware tools. So just so you understand, it's going to actually do the VMware tools install so that you get better performance. And then I think it's going to reboot again. If it doesn't reboot again, I usually recommend a reboot at this time anyway. Yeah, so it's going to auto reboot. Uh, so again, that first time it comes up to the desktop, you're going to want to... Uh, not try to get started working because the VMware tools will have to install. Once the system is done with all of its installation, it'll boot up to the desktop that'll look something like this. And all we have to do is do Control Alt and the Insert key, and we make sure that the mouse is hovering over the desktop. So Control Alt and Insert, not Delete. Delete. If you do Control alt delete it will send it to your actual system. In this case, we're going to use a different key, insert, that will be sent directly to the virtual machine. Okay, so I'm going to type in the default password that we set. And eventually, server managers will come up and server manager is the tool that we're going to use to finish the installation of server 2012 the dashboard shows us some basic information and what I'm gonna do now <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go full screen on the view here. So if I go to player, I can click full screen. And I actually can change the screen resolution. Uh, another thing you can do If we wanted to, we can stretch to fit. So if I change the size of the virtual machine, it'll automatically fit the virtual machine in your window. So let's try full screen again. It should, there we go. So it fills the whole screen up. And if I want to, I can unpin the toolbar up here and that will hide the toolbar. And if I need the toolbar, I can get it to pop back up just by hovering the mouse up over the top and this is the VMware toolbar specifically now we have a lot more screen real estate um, this particular system I'm using is 1920 uh, by 1080 which is HD so it gives me full screen resolution so some things that I need to do I'm gonna click on local server and the first line says computer name let me change the view so that's a little bit more viewable so the very first line says computer name and if I click this link it brings up system properties now I can go down to the change button and I can actually rename the computer and I'm gonna call this computer server following the lab manual for security plus and I'm gonna click OK and it'll say I have to restart the server in order for the changes to take effect I'll click OK and when I click close I'm gonna say restart later now the manual does want you to change um, to a manually assigned IP but we're not going to do that we're gonna leave it set up as DHCP in case we have to download some software into our virtual machine here so we'll just leave that as it is the other thing we want to do and we can see that currently Windows Update is not configured I'm gonna change Windows Update I'm gonna click that link for not configured I'm gonna click let me choose my settings select an option 
and I'll click never check for updates. And the reason we're doing this is we're just going to use this server um, for testing purposes so we really don't need to wait for all the setups. If you were testing a system that was completely up to date you would definitely want to uh, put in all the updates but we don't want to wait the, for the time it takes to run all the updates. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that and then we have a couple more settings that we're going to do. On the taskbar, if I click the File Explorer icon and double click the C drive, What we'll do now, I'm going to right click the Windows menu and I'm going to go to Control Panel and I'm going to switch the category view to Small Icons and then I'm going to click Folder Options and with folder options I want to change a couple of settings here I'm gonna to go to the view setting and I'm gonna click show hidden files folders and drives I'm going to click unclick hide extensions I'm going to unselect hide protected operating system files and when I do that it warns me that it's not a good idea but in this case we definitely want to do it so I will click yes I'm sure I want to display them and I'll scroll down but there yeah there are no other settings that we need to change here so I'll click OK and then I'm gonna click close here I'm gonna move my mouse all the way down to the bottom of the toolbar where the network internet access icon is and I will right click and click open network and sharing center then I'll click change advanced sharing settings and I'm going to turn on network discovery so this system can be found on the network and I will turn on file and printer sharing and then I'm going to save changes and then I'll close now in some of the, the labs that we will do the Windows firewall needs to be turned off and we can turn that off here if we want to with this link here turn Windows firewall on or off so I can turn off the firewall here and click OK and then the firewall will be shut off if I right click again on the Windows charm <coughs> I can click shut down or sign out and I'm going to click restart because remember we changed the system's name so we need to do a restart and there's several options you can choose. One of them that I'm going to choose is Operating System Reconfiguration Plan. Now one thing I might consider doing before the restart, I'll minimize Server Manager. And if I right click on anywhere on the desktop and click Screen Resolution, if you have a high DPI display like a 4K resolution or in some cases HD monitors or a retina display in a Mac I can click make text and other items larger and I can actually make the text a little bit larger 
this will change the size of all items so that everything's a little bit bigger and easier to see and then I can click apply that way if I open a dialogue so let's go back into Explorer again and I'll give you an example so if I double click C and we were looking at folder properties If you look at the text now it's definitely easier to read and you could always change it to icons as well and larger icons and medium and it just makes everything a little bit easier to view so that's one thing you can do to scale things a little bit larger for you depending on whether or not you need to have uh, everything larger and make it more viewable so now I'm gonna right click that Windows charm down there on the corner do shut down and sign out and restart and I will select operating system reconfiguration planned and the reason that we do this is because with a server anytime that you are doing a restart you should leave a message in the log explaining why the system was restarted now we could have typed in a specific reason but in this case we're just selecting one of the pre-created reasons which is a reconfiguration so I'll click continue I'm gonna go up to my toolbar for VMware player and turn off full screen the system will go ahead and do a reboot and come back up and that will conclude our installation of Windows Server 2012 in VMware Player.